Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary friends. Welcome to Multicultural TV Talk, a Media Village podcast where we bring you exclusive interviews with talent and creatives from across entertainment, discovering their stories and how they're changing the face of stardom across media. As always, I am your host, Juan Ayala. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, let's get to talking. So joining us today to dive into the highly anticipated new prequel series to the CW's Walker is one of the stars of Walker Independence. Please welcome Justin Johnson Cortez. Justin, welcome and thank you for being here. Thanks, Juan. I appreciate it, man. Happy to be here. So Walker Independence is just a few days away. It's finally here. Um, and I hear you're about midway through production for the first season. So with this being your first series regular role, um, what's going through your head with all of the excitement and everything? Oh, man, it's all new for me. So yeah, you, you kind of hit it on the head with that. We are about halfway through and it's it's been moving so fast that TV just flies, man. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect really coming in. You're like, you know that you're going to prepare your stuff. You're going to show up on the day. You're going to do your thing. Um, but it just keeps coming like week after week after week. And it's, it's been a blast for me. I, I truly am having the best time. And uh, the, the family we have, the, the cast, the crew, everyone just makes it amazing every single day we're on set. But yeah, I'm excited for the world to see it. Um, I think there's always going to be a little bit of nerves and when people are going to see something for the first time. And uh, we just love it so much. So we just hope everyone else loves it as well. And with the character of, of Callie, and, you know, it's really wonderful to see um, new Latino indigenous roles, not just being written, but also there being this new level of awareness and making sure that people of that heritage are cast in those roles. I feel like so many times in history, there have been, um, especially with indigenous roles, people not of that community going in and playing these roles, and it's not authentic, it's borderline offensive sometimes, and it's really wonderful to see this sort of like new level of representation coming up. So what does it feel like to be part of this like increased authentic representation? Uh, it feels good, man. It feels good. Uh, it's also a little nerve wracking because there's a lot of pressure. You know, I, mm. I, I know there's a lot of really great talent out there that have been working really hard to try to break into the industry. And, and I, I was, I was with that group. So it feels really amazing to finally get to work and represent, uh, you know, the culture and, and, to be part of a project that that welcomed that, I guess. And I was nervous going into this one because uh, you never know, you know, it's, it's different if you're on like Res Dogs where it's like, these are native producers and native showrunners. This is, this is a different thing. So you never really know what you're going to expect. But the team behind this show really made it clear early on that they want to do something different here. They want to do something right. So I was, um, I feel very blessed, man, to be a part of this. And you're right, man. The, I was just thinking about a project the other day and I couldn't remember. I think it was one of like the X-Men movies and uh, Silver Fox is played by somebody in the, in the show and she's supposed to be Blackfeet. And I'm pretty sure the actor wasn't indigenous at all. And I was just thinking how far we've come even in such a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, in the grand scheme of things, it feels like we should have came here sooner, but now that we're going there and, and we're filling these roles with, uh, with accurate representation, it feels really good. Um, but even me, man, I'm mixed. So, I'm always nervous coming in, you know, it, I grew up kind of feeling not quite brown enough, not white enough, like to fit any space, you know, so um, I just, I just hope I'm doing it justice and trying my best to do that. And, and hopefully people will accept that and see that. Yeah, I feel like those of us who are mixed do, especially if we're in media or entertainment, do have that sort of identity crisis, like, am I enough to do it? And then for other roles, you say, well, I'm not that at all. And just that struggle what can you speak uh, you know we have lots of sort of actors and artists uh watch our show so what can you sort of speak on that you know it's i think when something comes your way you got to ask yourself like hey is this something i could serve and, and do well there have definitely been times in the past where i've gotten something where I'm like hey this doesn't really feel like me you know mm -hmm. this doesn't feel like it's right i probably shouldn't do this i won't do this justice um so i think just having that like internal voice speaking to you and keeping you honest uh, with Callie. And I felt like when I read the character, I felt like it connected with the two worlds thing because of what I just expressed. Um, and Callie and is kind of caught in two worlds as well, you know, with the changing landscape of the West and his interest in the town. Um, I felt like I could really, really do that justice uh, because I feel like I could connect that, connect that in my real life. So, you know, I think for anyone that's kind of coming in or people who are grinding away in the industry, it's just like, stay true to yourself. 
I think uh, for a long time, I fought certain parts of myself, try to put myself in a certain box that people might have seen or liked more, you know. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time not going in the sun when I first got into acting because I, I didn't want to get too dark because I want to be able to, you know, play white if I could. Uh, my my dad's, my on my dad's father's side, we're Irish, so my last name is Johnson by birth. And, uh, but I have lots of family names and, and, and so coming in with uh, the name Justin Johnson, people didn't really see me for, for what I was, I guess, fully. They just saw mm-hmm. one little aspect and I try to fit into that little tiny box. So what I tell people is, is just be true to yourself and who you feel and the timing is going to come when it comes. Yeah. And I'm speaking of that um, sort of storyline of uh, Callian's loyalty to his tribe being tested because of um, his involvement with Abby's quest. And um, we won't get too much into spoilers because that is a few episodes in that we start to see that. Um, but what are you most looking forward to for audiences to see with, with that storyline and just with his arc overall? Oh, man, there, there's some really good stuff coming, like some really good stuff that really hit. And uh, when I read the scripts for, for those episodes, um, man, I, it just it means so much to me that we're putting the effort into this storyline, into this character. Uh, I can't give you guys too much because because uh, that's going to be a few weeks away. But man, it's it, it was really cool. I um I really I was so thankful to the writer uh, who is part indigenous as well, and and he kind of grew up in a similar way as me and with, with two worlds, you know. And he really he really nailed it. And they they tied they tied this backstory in for Callie and that kind of like answered a lot of questions that I had early on about the character. Why, why would he do this? Why did he feel this way? And, and it kind of all came together this moment. And, and I was, I was blown away, man. I'm so excited for people to see it. Uh, I think it's really beautifully done. Um, super respectful. I, I feel to the culture. I, I, it makes Callie a complex dynamic character. We get to know what he feels, you know, his past, why he does things he does. It, it, it it's everything I wanted for this character becomes is just somebody humans could relate to, you know what I mean? And not just some expendable side piece that that's just there to serve other characters. And, and I was, uh, I was so touched by this. So I'm excited for the world to see that. If you look back at the Western genre, it was such an iconic era in American cinema, but often if there was an indigenous character, there were the sidekick, they were just sort of stuck in this box of, uh, stereotypes and tropes and seeing uh, writers making sure to break beyond those stereotypes is so great to see in this show. And uh, another show comes to mind with um, Ghosts, um, the character of Sassafis, played by Roman Zaragoza, who's been on our show many times. Um, another fellow Latino uh, indigenous actor. Uh, and just so great to see these new layers of, of what a character like that can be and giving opportunity to those types of actors. And as you mentioned, Res Dogs is like one of my favorite shows ever. <laughs> yeah, and, and so seeing great, that, yeah, and seeing that increased representation has been so wonderful to see. Yeah, yeah, it's been incredible, man. And and I think I think people are finally seeing, you know, the value in these shows and these stories and, and how other people want want these in their lives, you know. And, and then I think even like with Res Dogs, I, I meet people who aren't, Indigenous, they're not native. They're they're just people, man. They love this show because it it it's got heart, it's got comedy, and uh, and a lot of these stories that we haven't been able to tell in the past because they haven't had a platform. Like now, people are seeing, and and there's value there, you know, mm-hmm. on multiple levels. In an honor show, we always like to make sure to touch on uh, representation with our guests. So, what can you, what would you say is like the earliest memory you have of uh, seeing a performance? Um, whether it was like TV, film, or even theater that made you feel represented for the first time when you were growing up? Oh, man, that's tough. You know, because I always tell people, like, I grew up watching people. See, my dad's mixed, but he came out with blue eyes and really light hair. And um, so I think there was something about seeing him in my life on the daily where, you know, when I, I looked up to, you look up to your father, you know what I mean? And seeing the way he looked and then I would see like Brad Pitt on screen and, and they weren't that different, you know? So it's like those characters, Brad Pitt played, you know, it's like they were, they were always the characters I always wanted to be, you know, I never really connected with, with any of the others, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, 
and that's all I saw was like Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise growing up. And, um, you know, I tell people, they're like, what's your favorite Western? And I'm like, Young Guns, you know, I, I really, I really loved that Western when I was a kid. It was great. It was exciting. But uh, Chavez was like the first thing I saw. And I, I remember him being like the one, like, I want to be him. He's cool. Like, mm -hmm. and I think I saw bits of myself there, but honestly, man, I, even up until a few years ago, I, I had trouble finding finding people I connected with on screen. You know, yeah. it's, it's it's difficult. And even to this day, my wife and I, we talk about it, you know, we got a lot of promo stuff coming out and seeing me on the screen. And it, it's, it's strange for me because um, I never really pictured myself as being this, you know, being able to, to, to be playing a character that, that people would be interested in watching just because I never saw it. So it's, it's super important, man. It's, and I hope that with Callie and, and with roles in the future that I play, I'll be able to show younger generation, like, Hey, look at, look at you. You can be on screen too. You could do this. So it, it, it's a lot of a uh, big responsibility and I feel honored that I get to do it. You know, again, like it's been so great to see this, uh, another, I totally forgot about the movie Prey and how mm -hmm. much that did for representation in a genre where, people of color are generally excluded. And the same goes for uh, for the Western genre with the ensemble you guys have between, um, you know, you guys have Philemon, Lawrence and yourself and, and this just wonderful ensemble cast. So um, what are you looking forward to for audience to see with their characters and with sort of all of these characters not really being sidekicks, it really does feel like sort of equal uh, level with everyone. Yeah, and no, I mean, I, the diversity in the show is, is, is amazing. And when you do see Lawrence and Philly on the screen, these guys pop, they're amazing. They're amazing actors. I love working with them. I, I work with Philly quite a bit in this show as people will see. And he just brings so much when you, when you're working in the scene with him and when you watch him on screen, I'm so proud of, of what he's doing with that character and same with Lawrence and Gabby. And, and um, I think people are just, finally going to be able to have something where where everyone could kind of connect with this show you know I, I tell people my my niece who's 18 could watch this show next to my grandmother who's you know 83 it's like like they could they could watch this together and and I think equally enjoy it um but that's and that's just in terms of age but when you get into the demographic of the show I feel like I feel like we're expanding and giving people something that's special and like you said, you don't really see these characters. You've never really seen them in the Western genre before. And um, I think I think it's gonna it's gonna surprise people in a, in a positive way. Yeah, it's about time. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if you were to have this sort of like back to the future moment where you ran into your thirteen year old self and you had the chance to give them some advice, what would you say? Oh man. What would I say to my 13 year old self? I was wild when I was a kid, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd be so scared because uh, the path has been great. I feel like I'd, I'd, I'd mess up the continuum if I, if I said anything, but I'd probably just tell him like, hey man, all the tough stuff you feel like you go through, you know, the stuff that happens in family and, and you know, the stuff you struggle with internally, there's, there's a way to make a positive out of that. And uh, you're gonna get me emotional right now, man. <laughs> there's a you know we all go through things and you could you could use that stuff for good and yeah. I feel like uh, I was blessed with some really amazing people in my life that helped me see uh, the struggles you go through and how to turn those into positives and uh, I just tell him to keep his head up and keep going and uh, never stop dreaming never stop dreaming well, Justin, thank you so much for, for taking the time to chat with us today. I'm so excited for folks to see the show. I got to watch the first uh, three episodes already. Any screeners that come, I'm like, more. I need more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, keep watching. Keep watching. Thank you, man. Appreciate uh, so, it. Yeah, absolutely. So if anyone wants to uh, give you a follow on social, Instagram, where can they find you? Uh, I'm on Instagram. I think it's just Justin J. Cortez. Um, really bad at remembering that, but it shouldn't <laughs> be hard. Follow Walker Independence the CW Walker Independence, and I think you can find me through there. 
Awesome. And uh, folks, as always, you can follow us at MediaVillage.com on Instagram. Head over to MediaVillage.com for all of our reviews, interviews, podcasts, and more. And Walker Independence premieres Thursday, October 6th on The CW. I'm Juan Yala. This is Multicultural TV Talk. Thanks for watching.